Hi everyone, Vladimir is here with our multi-platform game development tutorial, part 16. I must say that we've come a really long way and today is the day when we start developing, you know, some sense of progression, some uh, level advancement. And the first thing that we're going to do is actually, uh, we're, making, we're making a fade in, fade out screen on victory and it will give an impression that we're moving on the next level, even if it's just a restart for now. So here's what we're going to do. I'm going to switch to my desktop. And the first things first, our logic needs to tell our game screen that the game has ended. We probably should have implemented it some time ago already, but well, better late than ever. So we'll make a public interface game event listener. Uh, void on game end and we will pass the boolean indicating if the player has won or lost so after that I think it's a good idea if we <laughs> already make it as a parameter which is passed to our game logic and we also need to store it somewhat game event listener event listener let's call it that way uh, after that, just assign the value to this. It will, uh, as soon as the game ends, we will call this on game end method and notify somebody, in our case game screen, that the game has ended and uh, something should be done about this. So, uh, where do we actually need to notify it? We do it in our. Uh, game and function when we say that the player has won player mark victorious this is our assigned player position function when the player picks the bonus so after mark victorious we just add uh, event listener on game end the player has won so we're adding it as true after that I think it's a good idea that we actually get down to implementing the function already. So here's what we're going to do. Uh, in our game screen, in our game screen, let's make our game screen also implement this game event listener functionality. Uh, split it into multiple lines. You will see that the method is missing, but as usual, press Alt Enter and implement the missing end method on game end. For now, we're going to ignore the boolean, but here's what we're going to do. We're going to add actions to our game stage. Actions are like some kind of transitions or animations that are being done. And uh, libgdx is very flexible with those, but since I've used sprites and not native stage actors for our game, making our tasks harder, we will need to write our custom actions. So, not the best move from my part. If, you're, if this is actually your project, start refactoring, but I think I'm going to do it this way since the project is not large enough and it's okay. So, uh, action, well, it is an action. It, uh, it continues to execute as long as our function act returns false. So this action executes forever, but we don't want this. We want some kind of a timer. When we will fade the screen out for say 0 0.5 seconds and after that we transit, transition to new screen. So let's in advance let's make two variables static final float game and fade out variable uh, final constant which will indicate how much time do we want after the game has ended until we for our full screen fade out we will be gradually fading on the screen. And uh, since we're implementing the fade out, why not implement the fade in at once? So in advance, make the variable game start fade in equal to 0 0.25 seconds. So that part is done, but get back to our on game end function. Uh, we'll assign the new variable t, which will equal zero and on every uh, actually call it time uh, and on every act we just increase it by delta and the simplest thing to do is to 
you know, return true if the time is greater or equal to our game and fade out. But nothing happens right now. So uh, let's implement this uh, quadratic easing like we did with the, the player fade in and enemy fade in. So let's make the variable t, which is time divided by game end fade out. This is to normalize it from 0 to 1. Then we multiply time with itself and then we set the color of our batch. Well, actually, yeah, 2, 1, minus t. This will, since our game screen is black underneath, we clear the screen and we draw it black. This will make sure that our sprite batch uh, will set the transparency and uh, as the time comes to an end to our fade out, the transparency will become zero. Uh, and also after this is done, we need a new action which will uh, implement methods, implement the act method which will return true at once. As you can see, it's an error. So to fix this, we can simply add action, multiple actions. We need to use cut, cut those changes and after that call the actions sequence function. This is uh, the function of libgdx that sequences multiple actions. And uh, now we can add it. You see, no problem. Just remove the colon, semicolon. Uh, and on our final action, we need to sp switch the screen. First, we dispose the current screen, then we game stage set. No, actually, game set screen new game screen uh, game. Refresh it to the game. And I think this uh, actually should be the first the first thing that we did. Uh, adjust. In our game screen con uh, constructor, adjust the logic uh, to take the actually our game screen as the event listener. After that, we can, for the testing purposes of the fade out, let me reduce the enemy life from 10 to 1 and run the game and see what's happening. Is it acting as we want it? So we take we take the sword and you see the screen fades out. Uh, apart from that, we only need fade in now. So let's get to it. In our game screen, right at the constructor, we can actually add the same thing. Game stage, add action, only one action. We don't need a sequence right? we, like we needed the previous time. Uh, new action, make a float called time time should be equal to zero from the start and uh, we actually should return time is greater than or equal game start fade in. So what do we do? We ad adjust the time by delta every time on act and after that we have the float t which is time divided by game start fade in and then we multiply it by itself making a quadratic easing and after that if time is greater than if time is greater than 1 t is 1 this is not to mess up the transparency but after that we just use the we just set the color of the batch to our transparency method uh, let's run the game and i'll show you what's happening so at the start you see the game fades in gradually and if we kill the enemy, the game fades out. Uh, the game fades out. Uh, I think this concludes the lesson. And one minor thing: you've probably noticed that those warning effects don't actually possess any sign of kind of threat. So let me just get them down to <laughs> half a second. Now it should be some kind of a challenge to actually evade them. And let me get back with the hero with the enemy lives to ten. So, let's see what's going on, guys. As you can see, 
the warning effects became much more faster and actually much more challenging to dodge, at least while streaming and discussing what's going on. Uh, let me just kill the enemy and see if we have a cool fade out and fade in still. Let me pick some lives. Enemy. Cool, we have a fade out. This is the first step. And the next lessons we will work on how to uh, adjust the progression maybe and make the player feel like he's progressing somewhere. So that's about it. Thank you for watching. I'll commit the changes and post the link below. And uh, Vladimir is out. Cheers!